Hey, what's up? I'm Jackie. I'm a character designer at Netflix, and today I'll be making an illustration for my exclusive Patreon print club, where I make a painting every month, and then I send it off into the world for my patrons. If you don't know what Patreon is, you can subscribe every month to get exclusive content from your favorite creators. So I love making a print and sending it exclusively for my supporters. And that's, that's what I, been doing. So today we got a mood board up of girl in field aesthetic and, and we'll see what comes of it. I don't really have an idea yet um, other than this mood and vibe I'm going for. Come and join me on this journey and then maybe if you like the print you can join my Patreon and get it in the mail. Wow. All right let's get this soft girl on the road. Okie dokie so for this piece I really wasn't sure what I was going to do, I haven't really been feeling good about my art lately, so I've been in a block. So I haven't really been drawing much. And then for this, I was like, okay, well, I have to draw something for my patron. Gotta get that content out there. So I forced myself to kind of just put a pencil to paper and get started with my inspiration, which is soft girl in field. And I started with a sitting down position that, that didn't quite fancy me. And then I kind of, went with this idea based on these two images that I found on Pinterest and I was like okay well this this will be it this this will probably be the one that I'll do and I added some animals into there a couple of deer and sometimes I do these things where I add these things that I, I know I'm not gonna put in but I'd like to so at this point I was like okay I really hope that I, I stand true to these deer children um, and then you know what I did. I did keep them in it. I'm proud to say that I did. Because, you know, when something's a little hard, you're like, ah, but it'll be fine without it. But I, I kept it in. And I actually, I put in the work to figure out how to paint these deer, which I was pretty happy with. And you'll, you'll see that later on. So now I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this grass. I want to grass long enough to cover her feet and the deer's legs um, from, like, my reference photos. And I thought it'd be nice to have, like, a red flowers so I looked up poppies and I put her in a poppy field and later I was having trouble with the colors on like the deer and the dress because I'm like well if they're red and she's red and everything's red and then they're green well I don't know I just wanted a third color to go in but it didn't really well I'll, I'll talk about that later so then now I'm working on the poppies I was having trouble with the first few and like I the plan was to just duplicate like, you know, six poppies that I draw. Um, later on, I do duplicate a lot of them, but it did seem a little repetitive, so I just did a lot of scribbling later on of poppies with the new brush that I discovered halfway through. And those look better and, and they're like, you know, they, they blend together nicely. So at this point I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna finish the poppies until I figure out what I'm gonna do with her. Cause she's like the centerpiece, I need everything to match. And I'd rather redo the poppies than redo her. So I'm just working on the silhouette. Um, I have, I, I, I found, I remembered about a brush that I really like that has a soft edge and a hard edge. I didn't discover it here, but wait, wait until you see me discover it. My life changes and, I'm, and I start having more fun. I'm using this like really harder brush that doesn't quite look very soft, not the, quite the look that I'm going for. I'm using gradients until I figure out what I'm supposed to do. I'm using smudges and I'm like, well, it's a little too hard using lasso, kind of trying to find the, the energy that, I, that I'm kind of looking for. And then around here is when I discover that soft brush and then things start coming out millhouse. Um, I'm going over things and I'm really enjoying the way this face looks. I really haven't rendered a face in a long time and usually I work on Procreate. Right now I'm working on Photoshop, so like, I don't have the same brushes, so a lot of times I just avoid working on Photoshop because the brushes that I'm comfortable with are the you know, sketchy brushes that I have in Procreate. So I always avoid working in Photoshop for like pieces, but I can never quite get the, the depth and the complexity of a Photoshop piece in Procreate. Procreate's more for sketching for me, and I knew I wanted um, my Patreon print to be more than just a sketch. So um, I'm starting to really enjoy myself kind of delving into shadows and stuff like that. Putting a little bit more realism into shadows and skin and stuff like that. And adding a little bit of flair from the, um, the reference image. And, and I think it's fun. I, I like putting that thing, those things on 
what are these called, ruffles? Yeah, I had fun putting on these ruffles and I'm using a lot of gradients and lasso tool to have a really clean edge. And usually for like lasso tool, it doesn't give me the shape that I want because there's not a lot of control because you know, you put one line down and that's it. But I really, I really didn't mind for something like this. I think it gave it a nice pop. And then when, I, when I'm done blocking in the lasso tool, I like shave it off with, with the brush. So it, it turned out nice. And so when I put those shadows on in the dress, I like, I gradient tid. I used a gradient tool for on, on top of the lasso brush and then I smudge the edges to kind of have a sharp beginning. And then as it like fades into the dress, it's a lot softer. And I like that look a lot. Um, here I am putting in, what's it called? Little patterns onto the dress. I was trying to figure out how to, what, what pattern would look nice, a bigger one or a smaller one. I didn't want to make the pattern too small um, because the print is five by seven and I didn't want her dress to look like it was orange. I wanted it to look like it was red with yellow. And if you have too small of a pattern, it'll just kind of look like it's a middle of the two colors. And I'm just doing detailing on her. So I put a layer on top of everything and then I just play with, with you know, hair and and little details like that. I, I really enjoy using this brush for the hair. It makes it feel really flowy and not as hard as the silhouette was before. Um, oh yeah, here, so I have this back arm and that's another thing I was like, man, I hope I don't chicken out and I end up actually putting this back arm in. <laughs> So I'm glad I actually did because it, it brings the piece together. Because a lot of times I'm like, oh, but do I have to put this back arm in? Because the piece will look finished without it. And that's how I felt towards the deer as well. And uh, I'm glad I put it in. I'm glad I, I stuck with my guns and I kept it. I had trouble with this hand because I didn't want to actually figure out how the hand looked. So I was avoiding it and just kind of drawing the silhouette until, you know, push came to shove and I had to draw that hand. I had some fingernails, colors. There's, there's a lot of red in this piece, except for the background. So the one thing that I'm thinking about that I would have done differently, maybe color the dress differently. So the poppies pop out a little bit. Maybe like if it was a yellow dress, then the poppies would stand out on their own and then the dress would complement it. But as of now, like the poppies and the dress and the deer are very similar. So with the deer, I had to like make them more yellowy brown so they, they're just not like red. Usually when I draw brown animals, they're more of like reddy, red tones, like pink tones or purple tones, because I don't really like a plain brown. I don't, I don't think those colors work with my pieces very well. So here I am using a lot of reference and trying to figure out what a deer looks like. You know, I've drawn deer for work sometimes, but I've never gone out of my way and drawn deer in just like for my own piece. So I had to figure out what the style is gonna look like here. Before it was too realistic, the drawings I made, and the drawing, like the other character, it's very cartoony, and she has very soft shapes and rounded and sharp, like, you know, rounds and straights. So I worked, I worked at the faces of these deers and trying to get them looking believable in, you know, the style that we're in right now. And so first I, I silhouette, I, I crop out the silhouette with the lasso tool. And then once I have a pretty janky silhouette, I go back in with the brush and, you know, I make some parts softer and, and I, you know, it was, this was like the first time that I really painted an animal in a, in a long time. So a lot of it was just experimenting and seeing how it would look. Usually I do, if there's two identical, um, like character type things, like there's two deer here. Usually I draw the silhouette of one, draw the silhouette of the next. Like I do step by step for each of them so they're done at the same time. So I wouldn't like forget the method I used or like they would look very similar because the method would be the same both ways. But because I was still figuring out how I wanted to paint this, I decided to do one deer at a time to understand, you know, to, to, to like what I do the first time and then duplicate it and do it again the second time instead of like doing two that I wasn't happy with and having to redo elements. So it was a lot easier that way. Um, for these feet and for like the legs and the bottom parts, I really just like, um, I, I didn't focus on the legs that much because I knew they would be covered. Um, 
so like don't mind the bottom part. <laughs> Um, I also put a step-by-step -step of this deer on my Patreon because I thought it was pretty cool how I did it. How, you know, seven steps and you have a, a nicely painted deer. It's all about the details in the end. Like the whole thing is just flat gradients until you put those final dark lines on top, I think. So that was, that was cool to see. Um, you know, the deer can play. So here she is, the lovely deers are done, adding some shading just to blend them in to make it look like they actually belong there. I put the foot down, I, you weren't gonna see the foot, but I just wanted to make sure that, like if you did see the foot, that her foot would be behind the deer's foot. <laughs> um, so later I, I kind of like move the deer just a tad, or do I, did I already do that? I don't know. Um, just to make it um, really certain that the deer's in front of her. And, so it's not all janky. And then here I was trying to figure out what I'd do with the background. Um, originally in my sketch, I decided that I really want to stay true to my sketch. So my sketch had like these trees behind it. So I was like, okay, let's, let's actually put these trees behind it. Cause once again, I could just like cheap out and not do it. But <laughs> I really just wanted to do everything that I intended to do. So now I'm replacing, putting back the, the poppies because you know, with all these added elements, you couldn't really place the poppies before. And here's what I'm, I'm doing. I'm, I'm using that brush that I like, and I'm just making a lot of a lot of poppies on the same layer. And I think that these look a lot more natural in, in place because it's the same brush as most of the grass. And I think it really, you know, blends it together, but I already drew the other poppies and I'm not gonna delete it. So <laughs> I just kept them because you know, the variation was also kind of nice when some of them were more defined and some of them, you know, defined and sharp and some of them were like softer. So I'm um, duplicating, kind of blurring out the background ones, making them fade out so they're not as bright red as the foreground ones, so they don't stand out as much. And then at this point, um, this is the last day of doing it. I just picked it up again after like three days of not working on the weekend. Um, and on Friday when I was doing this, I was like, okay, I'm, I, I'm almost done, but I have a lot to do. And then when I came back on Monday to work on this, oh my gosh, it's Tuesday. When I came back to finish it, I was like, what else is there to do? I don't remember what my intentions were. So then I just like, I added some, some highlights. I thought it would pop out against the background nicely. Um, usually I add highlights and then I take, and I take them out at the end. Like I, I see which one's better and I usually just get rid of them. But for this, I, I really felt that because I had these like nice realistic shadows that some realistic like highlights would be kind of nice and I thought it, it kind of brought it together nicely and you can kind of get a sense. Oh my god, I forgot to do it on the path he's on the ground. That's okay. You can't, that's not a big deal, whatever. <laughs> um, so I'm just adding some highlights and some things. I, at this point I was like, man, what else, what can I do to make these colors look nicer? Because I was looking at it for so long, I stopped enjoying the colors but whatever overlays I did just like wasn't working. So I just kept it where the original was. And that's that's what I did, that's this piece. And I hope you enjoyed the process and me rambling about nothing. <laughs> so that's the end of this speed paint. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like, a comment, perhaps subscribe if you'd like to. And if you want this print in the mail, you can get it for only the month of April, the month that I post it today, then you can get it and you can get it into the mail and then you could put it on your wall. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.